how to find the right aircraft maintenance school now last week i published a video on six step process of how to become an aircraft maintenance engineer and in that video some of you have asked me how to find the right school i know it can get confusing with these regulations and laws and in this video i'm going to break down how to find your right school and why selecting a country is really important and thirdly i'm going to discuss what are the different categories that you can choose to become an aircraft engineer and finally what is a part 147 school and what do they teach let's get to the video Let me take few seconds of your valuable time. 96.8% of you who watch my videos haven't subscribed to my channel. Now this can be due to one of my weaknesses. Now if you see any improvements that I can do in this channel or any improvements on my end, please put them down in the comment section so I can improve and get your valuable subscription. Now this uh, subscribing to my channel will give me a motivation to do more videos like this. So I hope hope you would subscribe to my channel and for those of you who have already subscribed to the channel thank you very much let's get to the video finding the right school it is very important if you're planning to go abroad to become an aircraft maintenance engineer because your home country has a different regulation to another country let me expand on this like a lot of students they move abroad to become aircraft maintenance engineer, especially from South Asian regions, Sri Lankan students, Indian students, Pakistani students. They may move to countries like UK, uh, USA, Canada, Australia to become aircraft maintenance engineers. Now, the thing that they don't know is studying aircraft maintenance engineering in Australia and moving back to your home country might not recognize your qualification. Why? Because different countries have different regulation when it comes to aircraft maintenance engineering and even for piloting this is the same so that's why understanding the rules and regulation of your own country and the country you're moving to is very important when it comes to aircraft maintenance engineering because aircraft maintenance engineering unlike other engineering programs where you attend a university for through three to four years get your qualifications done uh, get into a graduate engineer's point and then climb your way up to become an engineer aircraft maintenance doesn't work like that don't get me wrong here there are universities who has the approval to do a full degree program but aircraft maintenance engineering is is governed by the civil aviation authority of that country of the country you are attending or your home country for example uk have civil aviation authority uk that's where you go to if you want to find approved schools or find schools that are approved by the civil aviation authority and if you go to a european country like italy enac is your point of contact to find what are the approved schools in italy Okay, and if you move further towards the Asian side, if you go to Sri Lanka, Civil Aviation Authority of Sri Lanka is your point of contact to find approved schools in Sri Lanka. And Australia, they got something called CASA, so the list goes on and on and on. However, in European Union, they have this IASA. Now, IASA governs all the European countries now we call them member states now member states are nothing but individual countries now europe sets standards and regulation member states they absorb these regulations and interpret in their own ways that's why if you study in an italian part 147 after after you complete the course there you can easily move to germany or malta to get a job because yeah it's under iasa they approve their qualifications but if you're someone from UKCAA or someone from Sri Lanka, oh, that's not the same case. Now, there is no process to convert these qualifications. So you are stuck with the country you select. That's why it's better to choose an institution where they have your country's regulations abide as well as the country you are moving to. For example, if you get schools like AST Perth Scotland in the UK, they are CAA approved as well as they are EOSA approved. So if you go there, you can either 
use your qualifications to work in Europe or in the UK. So now you know one important question that you need to ask from your institution before enrolling into a program and that is do you have the approval from civil aviation authority and what other civil aviation authorities are you approved by so now let's move on to categories now aircraft maintenance engineering has different categories now a helicopter engineer is different to a fixed wing engineer now you know how helicopter is fixed wing is a wing fixed to an aircraft and those can be examples like a320s boeing 737s and the Havilland aircraft so all those aircraft with a fixed wing we call fixed wing aircraft so what are these categories now categories is routes you can take to become an engineer in a certain niche or a category now let me start with b1 category now b1 category is predominantly mechanical stream now if you want to be a mechanical oriented aircraft maintenance engineer you need to select one of the b1 category now b1.1 is aeroplane turbine which is nothing but an aircraft with a gas turbine engine we call it b1.1 good examples are a320 787 q400 atr 7242 those aircraft are b1.1 aircraft now secondly b1.2 now b1.2 is aircraft that is fitted with piston engines good example is train aircrafts you see in flying school where pilots train to become pilots so those aircraft are usually fitted with piston engine so if you want to become an engineer in one of those aircraft you need to select b1.2 and b1.3 and b1.4 goes into helicopter side rotary wing b1.3 is turbine helicopter which is a helicopter that is fitted with gas turbine engines and b1.4 is piston engine helicopters so you need to make sure you understand this before you go and find a school because different schools have authority to conduct courses in different categories now not all schools will do b1.1 and b1.2 there can be specialized school for b1.2 there can be specialized school for b1.1 and you need to select these schools carefully according to your needs now some of you might be thinking where do you know i don't want to go into mechanical side i don't want to get my hands dirty i want to become a electrical and electronics engineer in aircrafts now for you the best pathway is to select b2 b2 is avionics in my head how i have constructed avionics is aviation electronics and electrical systems now these engineers are specialized to work on electronic systems of an aircraft and there is this category a license which is for minor maintenance on the line and i'll do a separate video explaining what is a cat a mechanic or who is a cat a licensed mechanic so now we know that different countries have different regulations so we need to be mindful when we select an aircraft maintenance school and secondly we know which category we should choose and also we need to be careful when selecting that school they have the category that we need to train on so now what is a part 147 school a part 147 is another name for an approved school okay so let's take a scenario to understand the difference between non-approved schools and approved schools so let's just say i set up a school in the uk and i name it aero launch institute of aviation studies good and now i found the part 66 syllabus now what is part 66 syllabus part 66 is the license you're gonna gain in the future but every aircraft maintenance training school should abide by the part 66 syllabus in order for you to train as an aircraft engineer so a part 66 syllabus if you take b1.1 there is 13 modules that you need to complete i'll bring these modules in a separate video on what is b what are b1.1 modules and b2 modules so let's just say i got this part 66 syllabus and i hired few engineers to train you to become aircraft engineer and then i have a broken aircraft that i can train you guys on 
okay so no. i have no approval whatsoever from any civil aviation authority and i do the training and i decided look nobody is coming to my school because i'm not an approved school so now i go into yasa and i say look yasa i i have a school i have the facilities i have a training panel and i have i got a broken aircraft i need to become an approved school tell me how can i be a approved school now in a nutshell what happens is civil aviation authority they'll give you a checklist that you need to perform and they'll come and see your facilities and they will gauge it with their framework whether your institution has all the capabilities to become a part 147 school they they will come and they will check every single thing like to give a taste of what they will check is even the power sockets in my facilities they will check whether they are in accordance with the standards so they go down to those minute details to find that the students have proper capabilities to actually study the course and once they have completed they might ask me look you have a broken aircraft how are you going to give practical experience and then they might tell me look you can talk to a a facility that has the practical capabilities and you can do a contract with them in that way you will still become a part 147 but you need to make sure that you have a contract with a proper facility to get your students trained and now they give me the part 147 approval okay so a part 147 approval is an approval given to a school to provide training on behalf of easo let's just take out that approval for a while now if you are a student who came to my school without this approval we we are an unapproved school now that student if they complete my program and they did some experience on that broken aircraft they will not be approved by the civil aviation authority so they will require 5 years of experience given that they have completed the civil aviation authority aml exams and then they have passed so once they have passed they they need 5 years of experience post graduation to become an aircraft maintenance engineer now if you study from a part 147 approved school they need only 2 years of experience post graduation to become an aircraft maintenance engineer in other words to get your license so that is what a non approved school is now let's move on to part 147 approved schools what privileges do you have now if you are a part 147 school you have four main privileges number one is you can conduct basic training courses a basic training is another name for an aircraft maintenance training now some students they think when when the word basic is there or oh, it is something very low level course they have a higher level course that they can do no it's not like that a basic training course is another name given to an aircraft maintenance engineering course that is approved by the civil aviation authority so they will be privileged to conduct basic training courses they are able to conduct type rating courses i'll bring to what type rating is in another video but for this video in a summary type rating is an extensive course both practical and theory course related to one type of aircraft and once you have that course or certificate you are able to do work on that aircraft as an engineer okay and then thirdly they are able to conduct examinations on behalf of the civil aviation authority and finally they are able to issue a training certificate we call this certificate of recognition cfr so those are the privileges of an approved school that a non approved school doesn't have now let's break down a approved basic training which means a training that is given by an approved school now this has four elements number one is knowledge training number two is knowledge examination number three is practical training number four is practical examination let's break them down knowledge training knowledge training is when you select a category let it be b1.1 b2 b1.3 b1.4 there is a syllabus that you need to follow that is the part 66 syllabus that i told so once you complete that syllabus your knowledge training is completed however you have to sit for an exam 
that is your knowledge examination and you have to pass 75 and above usually these papers are multiple choice questions and there are some papers that has essay questions that can be human factors module 9 air legislations module 10 and also maintenance practices module 7 so once you completed your theory tra knowledge training and knowledge examination you will also have to do a practical training now practical trainings are usually done per module once you complete a module and any practical training pertaining to that module will be conducted from with you, with your lecturers and in this training they will teach you how to handle tools how to work in workshops how to dismantle and install stuff and how to usually work around aircrafts and practical assessment your lecturers will be testing you on how good you can use these tools and aircraft document sets to perform a task so once they are happy with it you have completed a basic training so there is one other thing that i want to touch on which is very important now these approved schools will also have modular programs now modular program is nothing but you sign up or subscribe to a module get the theoretical training and then you sit for an exam and that way you get your modules completed now these things are not approved by the part 147 because you're not going through a full-time program and these people will also have to show five years of relevant experience in order to become an aircraft maintenance engineer now if you really think this video brought any value to your life like my video and share it with one of your friends maybe your friends are struggling to find the right school to become an aircraft maintenance engineer now if you need help in finding the right aircraft maintenance school to your needs to your budget i can help you do that i am working with a couple of aircraft maintenance schools which are approved by easa and i'll be able to guide you through the process and things you need the only thing you have to do is so drop a comment in the comment section saying i need help and i'll contact you from there and we can book a free consultation call so i can guide you what you need to do next so we'll meet with another video next week until then keep fixing